Hello friends, welcome to the Siddha.com. Now in this video we will learn about the geometrical isomerism in alkenes. Alkenes we know they have a carbon-carbon double bond and around this carbon-carbon double bond we can have the different arrangement of the groups. And due to the different arrangement of the groups around the double bond we get the geometrical isomers. But first let's have an overall look at the isomerism. Isomerism, as I have discussed it completely in one of my video, you know, which is totally based on the isomerism, I suggest to you people to go over to the, you know, uh, the isomerism to understand what the structural and the stereoisomers are. Isomerism is of two types, structural isomerism and the stereoisomers. And stereoisomers, it can further be classified into two groups. One is a conformational isomer, conformational isomer, and the second one is configurational isomer, configurational isomer. Configurational isomers are of further two types. One is geometrical isomerism. And the second one is optical isomerism. Here in this video, we will only talk about the geometrical isomers in alkenes. In alkenes, we know there is a carbon-carbon double bond. And around this carbon-carbon double bond, we can have different arrangement of the groups. Suppose if I got here a hydrogen to this side, a methyl one of the group here, this one hydrogen, this one methyl. So I can arrange these groups around this carbon-carbon double bond by a different way also, right? So you can have a one more arrangement here, okay? Here in this, you know, uh, structure, we got the hydrogen atoms are on the same side. Now I can put the two hydrogen atoms on the opposite side and then the methyl groups are also on the opposite side. Now this is a one arrangement, this is another arrangement. You see here? This is CH3. If the similar groups are on the same side of a double bond, it's totally different arrangement than if you got the similar groups are on the opposite side. And these are the geometrical isomers. We use the cis and the trans terminology for these isomers, for these geometrical isomers. If the similar groups are on the same side of a double bond, we use the term cis. So this is a cis isomer. And if they are on the opposite side of a double bond, then it's called the trans. So in alkenes, we can have the geometrical isomerism. But not in all alkenes, we can have a geometrical isomers. Right? There are certain conditions for the geometrical isomerism. The number one condition is that there must be restricted rotation about a bond. You know, it means that if you got suppose a carbon-carbon single bond, we know around a single bond rotation is possible, right? So you can have a rotation around a carbon-carbon single bond. But if you, can, if you can stop this rotation, you can get geometrical isomers, right? So between the two carbon atoms, there should not be any rotation. And that is possible when you have a double bond. Right? So if you get a double bond, now rotation around the carbon-carbon double bond is hindered, right? This rotation does not occur. Rotation around a single bond is possible, but not around the double bond. So that's why we find the geometrical isomerism in alkenes. Right? We also get this, you know, geometrical isomerism in cycloalkenes also. Because if you got the carbon-carbon single bond, we know cycloalkenes, they are cyclic and there's a single bond. Correct? You can also, you know, uh, stop the rotation around these two carbon atoms if you got a, a cyclic molecule, say like this. Let's see. You got a carbon here, one carbon is over here, right? This is CH2 group, this is CH2 group. Now between these two carbon atoms, you can't have a rotation because you got the two bonds here, right? One from this side, one from, from this side, right? So over here in the cycloalkenes also rotation is not possible and also we can get the geometrical isomers in the cycloalkenes as well. But we will not talk about the geometrical isomers in alkenes over here. I will only concentrate 
about the geometrical isomerism in alkenes, right? So we have a double bond, restricted reduction is there, and the second condition is that the uh, groups attached to a double bonded carbon must be different, okay? The groups or the atoms must be different. That means if you have the same group, same groups or si similar atoms around a double bond, geometrical isomerism is not possible. So let's have a look at this one. We got a carbon carbon double bond, and each carbon you can see it has a, a methyl and a hydrogen. So these are different groups, right? This is not the similar group, correct? From this side also, we got the different groups. You know, the hydrogen and the methyl, these are not the similar groups, these are different groups attached to a particular carbon. And you got this one is called as the cis because the same, same groups are on the same side. Here the similar groups are on the opposite side, this will be called as the trans. But we can't have a geometrical isomerism in alkenes having the similar groups. Suppose you got the carbon carbon double bond and you got the methyl and the methyl here, hydrogen and hydrogen, identical groups, similar groups. So you can't have a geometrical isomerism in this molecule. Why? Because even if you rotate, you know, if you, even if you exchange the groups there, right, if you exchange these two groups, you get the, again the same structure. So geometrical isomerism is not possible in alkenes which has the same groups, similar groups, attached to a particular carbon, right? Or even if, you know, you got, suppose, this particular carbon, it has the different groups attached, ethyl group and the hydrogen, but from the other side, you can see same groups. So again, geometrical isomerism is not possible here. In both the carbon atoms, the group should be different, like here, hydrogen methyl, hydrogen methyl here, right? Okay. So let's have a look at this one, cinnamaldehyde, right? Cinnamaldehyde, you got a carbon-carbon double bond here. Around this double bond, we got the CH2 group, aldehyde group, and the hydrogen. So this carbon has different groups of dyes, right? Okay, what about the other carbon? Phenyl ring and the hydrogen. Different groups of dyes, so that means geometrical isomerism is possible in this one. And this one will be called as trans, right? It will be called as a trans because the similar groups, hydrogen, they are on the opposite side. I can draw one more structure for this, right? Like this. Suppose if I got the CHO group over here and hydrogen here and the C6H5 here and the hydrogen here. Now this will be, this is again the same value height, but it is a cis isomer. Why? Because the hydrogen atoms are on the same side of a double bond. If the similar groups are on the same side of a double bond, we use the term cis. And if they are on the opposite side, we use the term trans. So these are the cis trans isomers, right? These two are the cis trans isomers. What about this one, the oleic acid? Again, you see here, the two groups are different, right? The two groups are different. Here also the two groups are different, but you can see here, hydrogen, hydrogen, they are on the same side of a double bond, right? They are not in the opposite direction, so this will be called as a cis. And if you, have, if you have a hydrogen over here, and this whole group, you put it here, then it will be a trans isomer. So that means in this molecule, we can have a cis and trans isomers. Correct? Fine. What about this one? Again, we can call these molecules as, right? You know, this will be called as a cis isomer and this will be called as a trans isomer. So these are the two cis trans isomers, right? Because you got the chlorine and the hydrogen. Chlorine and the hydrogen, right? Okay, what about this one? Again, you can see here, methyl and the hydrogen, different groups. CH2H and the CH3, again different groups. So to a particular carbon, we got the different groups attached in both cases, right? And you can have a geometrical isomerism, right? In this one, here the two groups are on the opposite side. The similar groups are on the opposite side. This will be called the trans isomer. And I can draw the cis isomer of the same molecule. Suppose I got a, if I if I got a carbon carbon double bond, and then say for example, if I take the CH3 here and the H here, and now I exchange these two groups here, right? Let me take the CH2OH to this side and the CH3 here. Now, CH3, CH3, 
Similar groups are on the same side of a double bond. Here they are on the opposite side. So this is the trans. Here on the same side, this will be the cis. Right? Fine. What about this molecule? So this is a bit different than what we have learned so far. You call the carbon, different groups are attached. That is correct. Here also the different groups are attached. That is correct. But we don't see any similar groups. Right? So if you call it the cis or the trans, you got the fluorine, you got the bromine, chlorine, iodine. So totally four different groups are attached, right? If all the four different groups are you know different, then how can we use the cis and the trans? We use the cis and the trans isomerism, you know, this cis and the trans terminology when at least two groups are same, right? At least two groups are same. On the two oppositely, you know, uh, on the two double bonded carbon atoms. Suppose you got the here methyl group and here also the methyl group, right? On the two different carbon atoms, we have got two similar groups attached. Only then we can say, we can assign it as a cis and the trans. But what about this one? Right? So we can't use this cis and the trans isomers for these type of alkenes where all the four different groups are different. Okay? So therefore, we have, we have a one more notation for, the, for these geometrical isomers. It can show the geometrical isomerism, but we don't use the cis and the trans terminology. We use the E and the Z tone notations for these geometric isomers. Okay? So we have E and the Z. E we use when... Okay, we'll discuss about it, what, what this E and the Z means, right? Okay. So we have used E and the Z. What it is? Okay? And how do we assign the geometric isomers, right? Over here... You know, for the E and the Z notations, we have to, you know, apply the CIP rules. You know, can in colon the prelog rules. Okay, CIP rules. So, what are these CIP rules? Okay. Here in this system, we actually give the priority to the, to the groups, right? Around the double bonded carbon. Suppose we got the chlorine and the bromine. So we have to assign the priority. And the priority is given based on the atomic number. Right? The priority is based on the atomic number. Suppose we got the chlorine and the bromine. Bromine has the higher atomic number than the chlorine. So the group with the higher atomic number gets the first priority. So bromine will be the number one. The chlorine will be the number two. So out of these two groups, the bromine gets the number one priority. And the chlorine gets the number two. This is based on the atomic number. Again over here, fluorine and iodine. Right? Iodine will get the number one, fluorine the number two. So we assign the priority, right? We assign the priority to the groups. And that priority is based on the atomic number. Right? And if the highest priority groups are on the same side of a double bond, we use the term Z. Okay, we use the term Z. And if the highest priority groups are on, the, are on the opposite side of a double bond, we use the term E. Correct? So that means this molecule is the Z isomer, right? We use the term Z. And if you got add, you know, iron over here and the fluorine here, then it will be called E. Fine. Now let's look at this molecule. Here in this molecule, all the four groups are different. Methyl group will be given the number one priority and the hydrogen the number two. Right? Because the carbon has a higher priority than the hydrogen. Now what about this one? Okay, and what about this molecule? Which should get the higher priority? So we first check always the atom which is attached to the double bonding carbon. So you got here the carbon, you got here the carbon, so there's actually a tie between the two. So we can't prior, you know, we can't get, uh, get any kind of a priority here. Then if, if the groups are same, if the first carbon atom, you know, here and the here, we know the atomic number is same, so we can't give the priority because the atoms attached to this double bonding carbon, they are same. And then we will move to the next, you know, next atom. Over here you see the two hydrogen atoms, but you see here this particular carbon is attached with the three methyl groups. Right? 
so we got here the priority now this group will be given the number one priority and this will be given the number two priority you got over here in the first carbon atom you got a tie we can't decide whether this is higher the priority or this has a higher priority so we will move on to the next atom attached to this one so this group will be given the higher priority than this right because carbon has more priority than the hydrogen okay so in this molecule the highest priority groups are on the opposite side of a double bond so this will be given as e notation right if the highest priority groups are on the same side of a double bond then we will use the z notation right fine so this is an e so let me again explain you know how we give the priority to these groups okay you got a carbon carbon double bond okay you got a carbon here then it is attached with the hydrogen atoms here and you got the hydrogen here right from the other side you got what carbon two hydrogen atoms and another carbon with two hydrogen atoms and then the oh right over here we got the carbon but this particular carbon is attached with the ch3 groups ch3 and the ch3 so we actually have to assign the priority you see here the first atom attached to this particular double bonded carbon is c and here also you see the c carbon so it's the same we can't give the priority we can't assign the priority here then we'll move on to the next atom right now you got this particular carbon it has got two hydrogen atoms and a one carbon but over here you can see in this case it is attached with the three carbon atoms so obviously the carbon has a higher priority than the hydrogen atoms and therefore this whole group will be assigned the number one priority and this will be assigned the number two priority okay from this one this is the number one priority group and this is the number two priority group and the highest priority groups are on the opposite side so this will be an e isomer right okay let's take another example here in this case what we find four different different groups again but this will be given the number one priority and this one the number two pretty simple but over here the ch2 ch2 same so there's a tie we can't decide now let's move to the next one it is a ch2 ch2 again there's a tie and then we got the carbon but over here you got the fluorine right so fluorine has a higher atomic number than the carbon and you got the difference over here right you got the difference over here fluorine the higher your priority than the carbon therefore this whole group will be assigned number 1 and this will be given the number 2 priority and we see here the highest priority groups are on the same side of a double bond so this will be a z isomer right now in this molecule again we have a bromine and you got here the this is basically a ch3 group isn't it and this is actually the ch2 group and this is a ch3 now let's give the priority bromine will be the number 1 because the carbon we have here the carbon so this whole group will get the number 2 carbon has a less atomic number than the bromine right so bromine the number 1 and this group the number 2 over here we got the carbon and you got the chlorine so chlorine the number 1 the methyl group here the number 2 highest priority groups are on the opposite side here so we use the term e right if the two groups are on the same side of a double bond if the highest priority groups here right these are on the same side of a double bond then it, it will be the z notation right z isomer but this one is e isomer hope you got the concept thanks for watching the video bye for now